thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm trying to understand uh, your issue. So there, there's a um, copyright issue. There's there's like an intellectual property issue, rights issue. Is that is that your main concern? Is in, and do we have any examples of this being a real threat where repair shops have pirated, um, you know, uh, proprietary information and, and stolen it and tried to sell it to other places? I'm, I'm trying to understand your issue. Because I'm kind of with these guys, I'd much rather I got three layers with my car. I thought the car example was excellent. I can take it to the the, the dealership and get it fixed. I can take it to my non-dealer repair shop who's certified, or I can take it to my neighbor Eddie and have him fix it. Right. So I have all three layers that I can go through with my automobile, and I can make the decision that's best for me. So unless you guys can show like a real risk to copyright infringement and digital theft privacy, those types of things. I don't really understand why we wouldn't let everybody have a crack at fixing my, my phone when it breaks instead of me having to go. Everybody has a horror story on this, I guess. I don't even have an Xbox. I don't, I don't know what it even looks like. But, but when, I take my, uh, when, I take my, when I take my computer and it's the same thing, it's like, well, can't fix it, got to send it in, got to buy a new one. You know, so is there, I, I, that's the part. I, I do understand if you can prove a real threat to your uh, intellectual property. I really like what he did there. He's not interested in discussing the theoretical. He's not interested in discussing the fantasy land implications when they say there may be intellectual property or copyright implications. What he wants to know is how is this actually going to affect you? He wants examples, concrete, perhaps self-leveling concrete examples as to how this bill is negatively going to affect the lobbyists' companies. And I appreciate that. He also brings up the car example with ownership where I can go to the dealer, I can go to a certified person, or I can just go to my neighbor. Why is it that I can do this with my car, but not there, which is where I think perhaps my AutoZone analogy in regarding that commercial in my testimony may have helped us along. I also noticed that he seems as gung-ho in going after the lobbyists and really throwing some hardball questions out there as the previous fellow. So, this is something that comes up a lot in my YouTube comments. People will be very partisan. They'll say, oh, yeah, you're not going to get a, a fair shake out of any of those Democrats. They're all left-wing communists that want to control your speech and control what you do and control you. Or people will say, all the Republicans are all pro-corporate. They're never going to listen to you or do anything that helps the little guy. And what I find is that the D or the R next to their name actually has nothing to do with how I will be treated. I've lobbied in Nebraska and Tennessee, and I've lobbied in Boston and Albany. There is a, mostly Democrats in New York and Boston. There's mostly Republicans in Nebraska and Tennessee. And what I found is that whether I'm going to be ignored or listened to has very little to do with party affiliation. It has everything to do if they've had the displeasure of setting foot in an Apple store and dealing with the Genius Bar. I said this in my 2015 video, that once I saw the assembly person and the senators talk about their experience with tier four repair at the Apple store, I knew I had a bill sponsor. And I got a bill sponsor right then and there because they connect with the experience. The same way this gentleman here connected with the experience of going to the store, hearing what they had to tell him about his device, how it's probably not worth fixing, you might as well just replace it, blah, blah, blah. Once he had that experience, that was in his head, and he's going to remember that experience when a lobbyist comes to him and says that there, you know, th this is a terrible bill and there's really no problem. You can easily go to the manufacturer and they do a great job already. He knows that's not true because he's lived the experience. And the lived experience of the politician, to my experience, is more important than whether or not they are a Democrat or Republican. I'll just briefly address this. Thank you for that, Senator. Um, I, I do want to say our products um, that my technology companies are, are working on um, are meticulously designed, and they are uh, using the highest caliber parts. What, if anything, does this have to do with the Senator's question? And um, I would love to follow up with you and have um, some of them sit down and sort of walk through the process that some of these um, these devices take. It's a, it's a lot different than um, when we're just replacing the battery and our, uh, our remote controls, although those are also becoming increasingly complicated, and I understand that. So, um, But I, I do take that concern very seriously, and I'd love to... But I do take that concern very seriously. You can tell from that little head toss over there that this is a very good fake display of sympathy and empathy with another human being for what they're going through. I definitely understand your concern. And we, we don't need this bill to kind of fix this stuff. We don't need this bill. We can, we can work this out one-on-one. -on -one. Come on, we don't really need to do all this. Th these are the people that were the prom kings and queens in high school. These were the people that everybody liked that were universally popular. And that's what makes them so good as lobbyists and so good 
working in PR. It's because they're so likable. And it reminds me of something that Scott Galloway was saying with regards to breaking up large tech companies. He said, I don't meet with their PR people or their executives because it's not that they're mean, it's that they're likable. It's that they're so likable that you're not going to want to do anything to them. You're not going to want to break up the company. You're not going to be against them anymore because it's impossible to be in a room with them and not like them and think they're great people that just want to do the right thing. You're not going to want to investigate any of the bad things that Google or Facebook is done when you meet with these people. And that's why I don't meet with them because I know I'm going to wind up liking them and then I'm going to not stop looking at the data, stop looking at the evidence, stop looking at what your companies have done and just say, yeah, just forget about it. They're so damn likable. And that's just something I think is worth pointing out here because it doesn't look like she's actually answering any of the concerns that were brought up. What she's responding with, in my opinion, is a very fake display of empathy.